again everyone, welcome back to another Things You Should Know About Pugs and the thing you should know today is diet. Now, I'm no expert on this by all means so I wouldn't take what I'm saying as a 100% this is what you should do. Everyone's going to be different, all dogs are going to be different. You can't specifically say your dog should have this because they might not like it. We've had lots of issues with Pablo's diet already. He decided that he was going to just reject food after getting him on the diet so we have to completely change it. So the main thing I want to stress about a diet is when you get your diet for your pug and when you decide on what you want to do, stick to it and you've got to be strict. If you're going to give a pug a diet, a pug is renowned for getting overweight, you know, trying to eat extra food, trying to eat more, trying to eat anything it can get at. You've got to stick to your guns, give it what you want to give it and that's going to be it. He's always going to be more hungry. Don't think I haven't fed him enough because he's still looking for food. He will look for food if you give him three kilograms of food for breakfast. It doesn't matter. He will just want to eat constantly. Stick to your diet, stick to whatever you give him and keep the portions the same day in, day out, get him at the same time and that way he shouldn't be overweight. If he's putting on more weight, just take a bit off his diet. If he is looking slightly underweight, just put a bit on, judge it by eye. Some pugs will have a higher metabolism than other pugs, so I could feed mine 150 grams, you could feed yours 100, maybe 200 and they'd be the all, all the same size. So when you're looking at a diet for a dog, there's a lot of things to consider. Obviously, this is going to be quite costly. Ideally, if you're getting a dog, the cost really shouldn't worry you. That should have been something that was sorted previous. You shouldn't rush and buy a dog if you can't afford to kind of look after it how it needs to be looked after. But at the same time, that's not to say that you should go buy a bag of food that's £100 over one that's £10. Just because that's cheaper doesn't mean it's better, worse. So from looking online and from doing my research about what to do with Pablo, the best diet for any dog, regardless of breed, would be a raw food diet. Now, a raw food diet is quite expensive because you're buying proper meat from a proper supplier who's going to be giving you the regular food that you need. It's going to be the proper nutrition, proper protein is going to be everything your dogs need and normally you can either buy them online or buy them in bulk so you get everything you need for the dog for the week it's tailored it's ideal it's perfect if you can do a raw food diet i would very highly recommend it so this can obviously be very expensive as well depending on how good a quality you want in this raw food to be now for us the issue wasn't of cost the issue was of space because obviously if you're getting raw food you need to get that in like a bulk buy you need to buy like a big bit of chicken a big bit of lamb a big bit of fish whatever you're getting so you're gonna have to have freezer space now that's something we do not have we don't have a big freezer we have a small little compact fridge freezer it's tiny for us it is just not gonna be feasible to do that diet we wanted to do that diet but it was just not for us you potentially could get it delivered every single day but that would mean you'd have to be in the house every day now obviously I don't do this full time I work Chelsea works there's people not gonna be in if they deliver it to our door and leave outside, it could get in the rain, it could be in the sun all day, and then it'd be horrible, and then we couldn't feed them it. There's a lot of problems with a raw food diet. If you can go out and get it every night, that's fine, but we have nowhere local really that does a proper raw food, like day by day, that you can buy, it's all bulk. Another thing with a raw food diet is time. There's obviously a lot of food preparation time. So if you're not on a raw food diet, there's then two options. You've basically got kibble or you've got wet food. Now again, this is kind of a bit of a choice between us. I would say wet food may be better. It depends on brand. It depends on a lot of things. So what you've got to determine is what you want for your pug, what you want out with them, how you want to look after them. And by that, you can kind of judge the food. So with us, we wanted to keep them on dry food and trying to keep them on kibble. The reason for that is things like it really helps his teeth. So especially now as a puppy, he's got his teeth falling out. We want him to be chewing hard food to kind of help them come out. And even when he's older, hard food helps the teeth, which is why in a raw food diet, you'd have bone as well. That would help with the teeth. So that's why I want to keep them on kibble and not wet food because wet foods just mush that never really affects the teeth. So you'll find the chew other things in compensation. You can give them chew toys, that's fine. It's just purely up to you. So another thing is the smell of wet food is obviously a lot worse than dry food. You know, again, this is preference. If you don't mind your house smelling, fine, wet food. If you do, kibble. Obviously, we've got quite a small little downstairs. We really don't want the house stinking just wasn't wasn't for us. So when you're looking at branded food, this is where you've got to be really careful. Now, we've had to change Pablo's diet and when we were looking at food, it was very difficult to actually find one that we thought was going to be right. After looking at raw food and kind of the ingredients that they get from that, 
to try and get a kibble or even a wet food that has them same kind of ingredients you, it's very difficult to get anything that's close really because raw food's that good for them so you really want something that's not as processed now obviously it's all processed but you'll find that there are some brands that don't have like lots of chemicals and lots of mixtures in them they kind of just have the base food so the food we got and we've not fed pablo it yet but it's from Lily's Kitchen. Now the ingredients in this compared to something like maybe Pedigree or Wags or the other, I'm not really sure on the other dog brands really. They're very highly processed, whereas Lily's Kitchen was very much like, you know, meat, fish. So when you look at the ingredients, you can kind of see like, oh, that's an actual food. Whereas when you look at the other ones, you look at them and it just looks like something you'd read on the back of a medicine packet. It's ridiculous the amount of stuff sometimes they throw in there. So we were on Royal Canine, which is also a really good brand. And you'll find that the more money you pay for the organic brands the better which is why we went for lily's kitchen royal canine's quite a, a big branded name you know but they do do the decent end of the food whereas if you look for your more like independent retailers your smaller companies that do kind of more organic natural food that's going to be your best bet for kibble and wet food so if you're walking into a shop and you're seeing like a big jumbo pack of food for 12 pounds it's going to be heavily processed. If you see the little bags, which are like £12, they're probably going to be better. Not to say that money makes better, but in this case, it kind of does. You want the most natural food you can for a pup. So to summarise, raw food is going to be your best option for the diet, followed by kibble and wet food, and they're kind of dependent on what you want. Whatever diet you do give him, you've got to be very strict with it. Make sure you're feeding him the exact same amount for breakfast, lunch, dinner, tea, supper, whatever you call it, and stick to that. Don't give him anything extra. If you are giving him anything extra, take a bit out of his dinner. You know, make sure he's getting the same amount of food all day to eat. That's including treats. And if he's underweight or overweight, adjust his diet. Don't just go what's off the back of the packet. Use your instinct as well. If he looks underweight, give him a bit more. If he's getting overweight, give him a bit less. Always give them water when they're having food. Always have water nearby. Don't starve them of water because that really does affect the diet. That's going to be it. I hope you learned something today. I know I didn't know anything about diets and I didn't know anything about diets really until i started looking a few like a few days ago the best thing to do is to look on the internet when you are actually looking at food and just to see what reviews are of stuff i know a lot of people have sent me links about diets and i've read them and they are go check them out in the comments of links people have sent me because they are really good to look at and yeah please do drop a like comment subscribe and peace out